Hi, I'm George and welcome to part 39 of the Horizon series. This week we're going to have a look at finishing the staging mechanism and also its electronics and then we'll also do some tests with it. So let's get started. Previously in part 37 we saw how the central bracket was made and today we're going to add the stage of release mechanism to it as well as its control electronics. We have used the staging mechanism on previous launches of the Horizon Sustainer, as you can see here. Here the staging mechanism was acting as the normal release mechanism on the launcher. These used a single servo motor and a single timer to release the sustainer. But in discussion with club members, Tim had suggested that it would be a good idea to have a redundant system for the stager, because of what I had been concerned about if the rocket did not stage and the sustainer came down fully pressurized. So we set about redesigning the release mechanism so that it could be triggered by two completely independent servos with their own timers. It took a week to design the mechanism because we were limited by the space we had to work in and the need to use the existing primary lever. Here are all the 3D printed iterations we went through before we finally reached the final configuration. And this is how the final design works. The two servo motors are mounted here with their servo horns next to each other. On the other side, the servo horns can independently push on this rotating cam. If one servo fails, the other can still push on the cam. If they both work, then they both push on the cam. It's like a mechanical OR gate. Here that servo mount is now attached to the central bracket. When that cam rotates, it releases this small lever. That in turn releases the secondary lever like this, which swings out, and that allows the primary lever to release the nozzle. It may look a little complicated, but we've tried to keep things as simple as possible in a confined space. We need to hold down about 120 kilos when fully pressurized and release it with a small weak servo. And as you can see, we also went through a few iterations of these levers. To drive the servos, we're using our servo timers that have been pre-programmed to use 200 millisecond step increments so that we could fine tune the release timing. We decided to put each of these timers in their own box along with their own batteries. The batteries are here at the bottom and the timers fit on top of that. Each timer uses a brake wire to trigger the timer. Over the years we found that this to be the most reliable way of detecting launch over say a barrow sensor or an accelerometer. Okay, now we need to make up some brackets to mount these onto the central bracket. We decided to go with sheet metal here for a couple of reasons. It was easy to form them into the complex shape we needed and they would be strong enough to hold the timer boxes in place as they were blasted by the high pressure water jet from the second stage as the sustainer released. Then before mounting the brackets we had to drill a number of holes in the central bracket to allow wiring to pass through for the servo motors. The brackets were first mounted to the battery boxes like this. Before gluing the brackets onto the central bracket, we prepared the surfaces by giving them a good sand. They're being glued with just a regular 24 hour epoxy. We did that for both of the boxes and let it cure overnight. So let's have a look at the assembly procedure. We first assembled both of the servo timer boxes. Then we thread the servo motor cables through the central bracket. These cables then get threaded into each of the servo timer boxes. The boxes could then be attached to the bracket.
Next up, we insert the two servo motors into the staging mechanism. These are just friction fit, there's no need to screw these down. Next up, we insert the primary lever along with the nozzle seat. It's hard to believe that this part was made around six years ago, and that gets secured in place with a circlet. Now we can mount the secondary lever, and then we can attach the servo mount. And here it is, all together, ready for testing. To test the staging mechanism, we are first using our static test stand we made back in episode 5. This lets us apply the right force without needing to pressurize anything. So here's the first test. It's armed. Okay. No, no. Oh, we didn't secure the... I think it's okay. Well, that's not a good start. Here it is from a different angle. The stage is self-released in less than half the required hold down force. It forced its way out. Now this wasn't the fault of the new servo setup, it was the primary lever that pulled out of the secondary one just enough okay. to let go of the nozzle. Before we have a look at what happened in detail, we decided to run a second test with a smaller load of only around 30 kilos to check out if the servo arrangement worked at all. And here are those tests. Three, two, one. Now this worked as expected, so we tested it again, but okay. with the second Three, servo motor to make sure that both sides Three, of the redundant two, system worked. And this test was also successful. So both, both worked. So now we need to fix the issue with the primary and secondary levers. So let's have a look at what actually went wrong. So here is a cross section of the release mechanism. Uh, the green part is that central uh, tube that's the nozzle seat. The gray part up here is the nozzle itself. Blue section is the primary lever and the tan section is the secondary lever. This little blue block up in the corner is what actually holds down the nozzle that's attached to the primary lever. Now the way this mechanism works is that nozzle is trying to pull out because of pressure that's applying a force to this blue block uh, that's trying to force the primary lever out like this so that the nozzle can release. This primary lever really only needs about uh, six or seven degrees before it releases that nozzle. Um, and however, uh, this primary lever can't move because that's blocked by the secondary lever here. The reason we have a, a slope here, it's just so that we're applying a force that's tangential to that. Um, so that we can force the secondary lever that's applying force to the secondary lever like this to let it go so that the primary lever can swing out of the way and release the nozzle. So that's normally how it works. So what was happening is once we apply a little bit of a force um, to the nozzle, this whole primary lever was moving up slightly, stretching ever so uh, slightly in length. But th what that allowed it to do is slip out of this bottom secondary lever and start tilting like this. And that tilt was enough to keep forcing uh, that block and the rest of the lever to deform slightly and allow that um, uh, nozzle to move further up, forcing this further out. The secondary lever would stretch ever so slightly and then the primary lever would slip out. So that was happening. So under normal loads, that's fine, but under the much bigger loads of an actual uh, pressurized launch, uh, everything stretches a little bit. And so here's basically how we fixed it. We moved that pivot point for the secondary lever from over here to the other side. Uh, the other thing we did was get rid of that slope uh, on the primary lever. Now, what this meant was that that secondary lever could move up, but it would still be blocked by the secondary lever. There was no way for this to slide out. 
Um, and uh, because moving that pivot, that also meant that we didn't have to move uh, just a few degrees. This time we had to move a lot further. We had to move at least 20 degrees before this would ever come out uh, of that uh, secondary lever. So that's all that was needed was just uh, create a new primary lever and move that pivot. And that allowed the whole mechanism to work under the various loads um, and allowed to stretch. With the changes made, we were ready to test it again on the static test stand. This time the load was raised to the target of 120 kilos or 265 pounds. One, two, three. It released without issues this time. So we tried it again with the second servo to make sure it also released at this load level. And releasing one, two, three. Three, two, one. And that too went well. Now that we've had a successful unpressurized load test, it was time to do a proper pressure test to see if it would release at full pressure. We reconfigured the test stand by first removing the lever and jack. Then we added a couple of blocks of wood to act as standoffs. And then finally, we stuffed a bunch of rags into the end of a PVC pipe and mounted that above the release mechanism. This pipe was going to act like a shock absorber to catch the released nozzle. Then we hooked up the air supply to the bottom of the stager. So we've got the high pressure hose connected to the bottom of the stager of the release mechanism. And that's then connected to the stager. This is a plug nozzle that has the same geometry as the sustainer nozzle. So here we've got the nozzle pointing down the barrel. I'm going to be testing this pod. And it just use a brake wire release. Releases 1.2 seconds after launch. And string goes all the way down here and back to where we're testing from. Time to do the first test. 300, 400, we're at 950 and releasing 3, 2, 1. Great, that released successfully. And here's the nozzle stuck in the rags at the top of the tube. After we got it back, Seven, we set up again to test the other eight, servo to see if that would also release at this pressure. Nine, and here's the second test. 50, a thousand. There's going to be a loud pop. Five, four, three, two, one. Now let's see that in slow motion. Here the cam starts moving and release. And so that test was also successful. Now let's have a look at the timing. From launch detect to staging, it's 1.35 seconds. From the time the servo is commanded to the time it releases the sustainer is only about 160 milliseconds which is really good in terms of response. So that's it for this week. Uh, sorry, it's taken a while to edit these videos, but we've had a bit of a break after the last launch. We've also caught up on some projects that were put on to the back burner. Uh, the series will continue with the rest of the build videos uh, and then we'll do the full length video of the actual uh, record launch uh, with the data analysis and then we'll do one final video in the series that will go over all of the costs of the entire project. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.